Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video is in the framing series and we're just going to learn how to construct this basic wall. You may be able to skip this video if you, if you went through the flooring video and feel really comfortable with it. Um, but if you're just stepping into this series on this wall, this will teach you some of the basic concepts. And one of the differences in this case, I use an array to do some of the walls as opposed to uh, copying them individually as I did in the flooring video. Uh, it's important to note that there are some good uh, draft tricks in the uh, flooring video, so you might, might want to take some time to look at that. So let's get started. So to start out, we're going to create a new document, and I'm going to add the plate first. Um, so the plate is the, you know, the horizontal member that runs on the bottom. So we're just going to call that a plate, and we're going to uh, change its length to 8 feet, because that's the purchased length of, of uh, stud lumber. And its width is going to be 3.5 because it's laying flat. And then 1.5 is the uh, actual length of a stud. So now let's zoom out to get that into, into view. And uh, if we look at, if we go from the bottom, you'll see if we set, uh, you know, looking from the front, it looks like it's supposed to be a plate. So to make the stud, we're just going to copy the plate and change the measurements and orientation a little bit. So to create our stud, we're just going to copy the plate and then we're going to make some changes. A, um, a pre cut stud is going to be eight foot minus the three plates that a, a common wall has. So uh, three pl plates is 1.5 times three, so that add up, adds up to four inches. So we're gonna subtract four inches from that stud. Next thing we'll do is uh, transform the stud and put it on its, head, on its end there, and then we'll move it in um, by 1.5 inches so it sits right at the edge of the of plate. And then the final thing we'll have to do is move it up 1.5 inches and then it's in position. Now, one thing that I do want to uh, take an aside to explain was th there is the possibility of attaching this to the plate so that if you move the plate around, the wall stays with it, but that precludes doing, uh, doing transforms. So, um, but I might try it with an array. So if you like, so if you try to attach it using the map mode here, uh, once once you've picked one of these, now the transform gets overridden by that. You can't change the placement. Uh, and also you can't do draft moves. The draft move will look like it's worked, but then it'll snap back to where it was, and that can be frustrating. So for now, I just avoid attachments um, until I find uh, where they might be useful. For example, uh, arraying, this might, arraying the center section might be useful. I'm not sure. But for now, I just put everything in as, in as a group, and I move the group around. So let's uh, add our, our second stud. Now our second stud is just set in a little bit, and this is not counting the cornering stud. It's set in a little bit to accommodate for, so the, the start of the uh, sheathing, uh, you want the sheathing to end where this, uh, where this stud is. So this one has to be a little shorter. So you can see it's one, one foot three inches and, and a quarter, so 15 and a quarter. So let's just, uh, uh, first let's rename this, and then we'll just, we'll just copy the stud and we'll transform it 15 and a quarter. So uh, you can just, you can do control V, control C and control V, or you can do the menu like this. So when we do the transform, it's gonna be 15.25 inch. And that'll get us that first, that offset stud for the first one uh, that accommodates for an eight foot piece of uh, sheathing. So at this point, I'm gonna do an array uh, for the remainder of the studs to go out to 10 feet. So to create the array, we have to use the draft array because the only other array available is in part design. And a part design is only, part design is only for a, one contiguous object. In other words, it doesn't have multiple pieces to it. So make sure you're in, in uh, draft. And we, you know, we start out by selecting the object we want to array, which is this, this stud here, and pick an array. So it starts out as a, um, an ortho array. <laughs> or, you know, square or linear or, you know, ortho seems to be a little bit. So I think we're going to have six of them in the, they're going to be in the X direction. So I oriented in the X, uh, I think it might be seven. And then we're going to go to the interval for the X and we're going to set that to 16 inches. So that's the space in between each one. And that looks like it's too many, but we still have to add two feet to our plate here. So we'll do that next. So you notice that this, this stud ends right on the, uh, the middle of the stud ends on the end of this plate, which is good. That's what you want. Um, so let's copy this plate. I probably should have done this first. I'm gonna transform it and we're gonna just do eight feet. 
not inches, feet. And it'll snap when you get to the distance. And then let's just change this plate to uh, a two foot, a two foot section. So we know the plate is going to be the full width of the full length of the shed. Um, and then we'll add a measurement to that later. Uh, so now we need, so I think our array should have been one more. So let's add one more. And that's the beauty of parametric. Yeah. So now we need to end, add the end stud and then we need to, uh, we'll do the top plate next and then the corner studs. So to add the end stud, I'm going to copy this first one and I'm just going to transform this 10 feet. I think that'll, uh, that'll get us too far, right? So we'll do minus 1.5 inch. I just find it so much easier to subtract an inch than, than, <laughs> than figure it out the other way. I don't know why. All right, so that's that's our basic shape. So now let's add the top plate. So the top plate, um, for the top plate, we can just we, we're going to clone this. Um, actually, let's do it. Let's clone it as a group. So let's put the plates in a group, and because this could have some interesting help for us later on. Sorry, I'm just I was in click confusion there. So uh, let's call this plates. Let's call this base bottom plate. So I don't know if, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's situations where the top plate is different. And I think actually the top plate ends up having an overhang to interlock, uh, but we're, we're not gonna do that right now. So now I'm just gonna clone this. And I haven't done this before for this, but, and then we should be able to move it up by, uh, what is it? So it, we'll, we'll just say eight feet minus uh, three inches. Yeah, that should be it it's two plates so that should get us right to the top and you'll notice that oh, so it was wrong one thing you'll notice is that it didn't actually show you the move until it moved and that's I guess that's like a little bug for the group move um, I'm not even sure you're supposed to be allowed to do this so I, I did it wrong by uh, by half an inch I think I like math I'm just not very good at it uh, 0.5 <laughs> so sometimes like there's an instance in FreeCAD where it wasn't working or it felt like it wasn't working just because there was no feedback. Um, There's no user feedback. So now I'm just gonna uh, clone this again. I'm gonna clone the clone. I don't know if that's a bad practice or not. So I'm gonna transform this like that. And for this one, I'm just gonna, instead of trying to figure it out, I'm just gonna use the draft move. So we're gonna uh, select a clone, do draft move. And with my endpoint selected, I'm gonna uh, select or well, we can just select this front one here and select this corner here. And I'm telling you, once you get draft move, draft move is your friend. So the only thing left is to do the two cornering studs, one for the here and one for here that you'll, that, you know, if you were doing drywall, you'd nail that too. So let's do that next. So to do the two cornering studs, I'm going to copy, I'm just going to copy the regular stud here and I'm going to transform this, uh, in like that and I think it's uh, basically just an extra half inch in between those two so I transformed the width and now just do 0.5 and there we're good to go so that's you know should be the width of a, a regular stud uh, we could measure that uh, let's just measure it real quick so we'll do from here to here and yeah so three and a half inches that's the width of a stud so basically when you do your other wall, that the end stud is going to sit against that. Um, so let's just copy this down to the, let's, uh, I think this is just called a, we'll just call it corner. And then we'll cop, uh, I'll just copy it and then we'll transform it down to the end. So you can, you can do like free for all sort of with transform if you have reasonable measurements. So half inch is a good increment for these studs. So I'm able to, to get it where I need to without thinking too much. Uh, but if you have, but if it's any kind of um, smaller increments or something, uh, you know, the translation is kind of like a snap to a grid. So that does it. The only thing left is to add our measurements. Um, and that's certainly optional. So you can, you can duck out to the end or, uh, uh, or, or follow through. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to be doing it on the front, but I want my um, but I want my measurements to be at the at the back of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at where my plane is. So right now my plane is at the base. So let's change it to uh, 
to front, but we want it on the bottom, not on the top. So I'm going to pick this surface here and I'm going to click on the plane tool and now see now you'll see it shifted. So now when I go to front, I'm good to go. Um, so what we're going to be doing is measuring the width of this, this whole thing here. Um, but there's no line, so we have to pick it by hand. So we start with the measure tool and with the endpoint tool. You, the endpoint tool is great for doing measurements. I find it just always, and then I snap it to the grid. And same thing here is going to be, so these measurements aren't going to be tied, tied to the lumber. I guess you could, you know, do a rectangle for, first like we did on the floor pan, floor plan, sorry. So now I want to do to the center of this, this guy here. So let's do this. We'll do right at the bottom. I'll do it at the bottom of this one. And then I'll turn my centering tool on or center snap and make sure our snap to pl work plane is on. So it goes where we would expect if I can get it. And you'll see the white dot at the bottom. Bring that about two thirds of the way out. Actually, I wanted that to be one third, but so, and then the last one I'll measure, let's see, what did I do on this? Oh, where the forefoot hits. So that just, I mean, that's sort of just for instructional, so we don't really need it per se. So because I did this one wrong, it's hard to move it without any kind of indicators. I'm gonna do the other one wrong. <laughs> so we'll start out with putting it, uh, we need endpoint. And I turn endpoint off because it can be hard to get that midpoint if you have the endpoint. So that's, this should be the forefoot one right here. So let's bring that one out here. So now I want to swap these. So now what? Oh, that won't work either. Uh, we'll just leave them for now. You get the idea. Uh, I, should, I should have paid attention. So let's see. Are there any other measurements? Nope. That's all I put in. Um, I guess we should we could set that as two foot. We could do a measurement there or something. But um, so that's it for the wall. So if you like this, you know this is a nice easy one to start with. It, maybe this one should even be before the floor, but that doesn't make sense. For, for the construction per se. Uh, so I, you know, this one's kind of fun to start with and uh, teaches, teaches us some basics. And so we got the array in on that and no, no really great tricks, but uh, definitely check out the floor video if you haven't, because there's some cool snapping tricks in there and uh, make sure you stay tuned and we'll be doing, uh, I think, uh, I think the roof, part of the roof is next or, or sheathing or something. So I'll see you next Saturday. Thanks. Make sure you subscribe and hit the alarm bell so you're updated when I post when the new videos come.